Right now, there are over 5 million birds leaving Australian shores. Every year, these birds, some barely bigger than a sparrow, embark on an epic 13,000 kilometre flight to the Arctic. That's the equivalent of doing 309 consecutive marathons with only one or two drink stations along the way. And what's more, once they have nested and raised their young, they turn around and do it all again. Welcome to Farewell Shorebirds. I'm Sean Dooley from BirdLife Australia. And over the next five weeks, why don't you join us as we follow the journey of Australia's migratory shorebirds as they head across the globe to the Arctic Circle to breed and feed. So what is a shorebird anyway? Perhaps we should talk to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Chris Purnell from BirdLife Australia. Shorebirds are a group of wading birds that spend the majority of their life cycles around uh, water or wetlands, uh, including intertidal areas and rocky reefs. Uh, in Australia we've got around 36 species which migrate from as far as Alaska and Siberia. We love our shorebirds! Farewell Shorebirds comes to you from Melbourne Water's Edith Vale Seaford Wetlands Discovery Centre. While the water here at Edith Vale has dried up in the intense summer heat, just a few weeks ago, the whole area was pulsating to three and a half thousand migratory shorebirds, including more than 2% of the world's population of the sharp-tailed sandpiper. Now we're not in the middle of some outback wilderness here. In fact, Edith Vale is in the heart of suburban Melbourne. This is one of the great things about shorebirds in Australia, is you don't have to travel very far to see them. In fact, some of Australia's largest and best shorebirding sites are within easy reach of most of the population. There are over 35 migratory shorebirds that regularly visit Australia each year. But for this series, we're just going to focus on six key species. Here's Danny Rogers from the Arthur Ryler Institute to tell us more. Red-necked stint. It's uh, one of our smallest shorebirds, fits easily into one hand, probably one of the very first shorebirds that any wader watcher in Australia will first get used to. I've been watching them for, I don't know, 30, 35 years trying to figure out what they eat. I still haven't figured it out. Migratory shorebirds fly to Australia to relax and feed up on the abundant food around our coasts and wetlands. But as the summer days start to shorten, the air gets a little bit chilly, the birds start to prepare for their migration back to the Arctic. Up on the Arctic breeding grounds, the shorebirds are decked out in some really flashy colours to try and attract a mate. But when they're here in Australia, they're usually in a more drab uniform of browns and greys, which can make them pretty hard to identify. So here with a few really good identification tips for shorebirds is BirdLife Australia's Chris Purnell. A lot of the shorebirds, particularly the migrants, are small and grey and pretty indistinct and many of the species do look the same. Uh, one way we try to get around this is to pick three species which are uh, pretty unique and then be able to relate the rest of the species to those three species, whether they be bigger or smaller or rounder or have longer bills or redder or greyer. Um, it's good to have a reference point. So something like a eastern curlew has a very unique shape. So these are little things that we try to pick up on all the way to try to factor in when we're trying to pull out an identification. I love my shorebirds. Not all of Australia's shorebirds are migratory. In fact, there are some equally fascinating species that call Australia home 12 months of the year. But don't just take my word for it. So my name is Gwenya Maguire and I work with BirdLife Australia, um, predominantly on resident shorebirds and as, um, the ones that are coastal and nest on beaches. Um, as not all shorebirds are migratory, um, the resident shorebirds that call Australia home, um, they're more homebodies, so like this footed plover, um, they'll live here year round, breed here and raise their young. Now, before we go, why don't we hear from one of the shorebirds themselves? Good evening and uh, thanks for coming up off the beach. Oh, it's a great pleasure. Uh, very nice to be here. I haven't got long. We're no, no, a bit I busy with that. packing up. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. that. I've got a few questions I need to ask. Yeah, okay. Is that all right? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Now, um, you're a redneck stint, aren't you? I am a redneck stint, yeah. yes. Good evening. You don't seem to have a very red neck. Well, no, the red neck is really a feature of the breeding part of the oh. year, the breeding season, the breeding plumage. And the breeding season hasn't started yet. Hasn't really yet. started right, yet, but I'll tell you what, Brian, when it does... Yeah, you'll become an Australian. No, 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 it's just that your neck reddens up a bit. Oh. 
your neck, oh, your neck just sorry, gets, gets redder. Can't read my own writing yeah, yet. No, yeah, no, I'm a redneck. Yeah. You said you're packing up. Where are you going? Siberia, Brian. Uh, we right. go to Siberia every year, eastern mm-hmm. Siberia, which is absolutely lovely. Yeah, that's a fair way to travel, isn't it? It's 11,000 kilometres, Brian. Yeah. Oh, that's a huge distance. Well, you know, you get used to it, Brian. I mean, sure. if you want to think of it in human terms, it's about the distance between here and Siberia. Right. Goodness me. Yeah. Um, and a few of you go? Yeah, we normally get a pretty good turnout, Brian. Um, yeah. Some of the young ones, you know, are not up sure, to it yet. Sure. And some of the older ones perhaps aren't up to it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we get a uh, very Quite good turnout, yeah. How many of you are there? Altogether? Yeah. About 300,000, Brian. Wow. Mm. That, that's a lot. Mm. And, and how do you actually get there? Well, Brian, we fly, we're birds. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yes, yes, of course, I understand yeah, we that. Fly but there. it's still a long way, and I mean, it's got to be difficult. Well, you know, Brian, we, we get we get used to it. Uh, it sure. takes it out of you, but we. It's you know, what a question we do. I've always asked. Yeah. Wanted to ask a bird mm. is, how do you sleep when you're in the air? Well, that's a very good question, Brian. I'm glad you brought that up. I can micro sleep. I can shut down half my brain for a very, very brief period. Really? Yeah, I just did wow. it. When? Just then. Really? Yeah. You want to see it again? Yeah. There you go. Good morning. Nice yeah. to see you, Brian. Sorry, I. Now you're doing it yourself, you see. Isn't it refreshing? Wow. It's very refreshing. And then you can continue, of course. And, and who's in charge of you all? I mean, how, how do you know where you're going? I mean... You're not a bird, are you? Well, no, I'm a human. No, you're a human. Yeah, no yeah. wings. You see, there's your trouble, Brian. Right. It's a bit hard to describe flying to someone who hasn't done it, really. But uh, Yeah, but you must have a system. I mean, well, how do you navigate? Well, we do it by instinct, Brian. Right, yeah. instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, can, uh, you can follow us if you like. If you're very, very interested, there's a website you can go to and you just register. That'd be great. You can follow the whole trip, yeah. yeah well, when are you going? Pretty soon, Brian. We're just waiting for the weather to break. Are you really? on Twitter? Yeah. Yeah, I'll tweet you. Great. That's about all we've got time for this week, but if you'd like to go out and see shorebirds in your neck of the woods, particularly if you live in southern Australia, then now is the time to do it because the birds are already mustering to head north. Next week we're going to look at a few of those places they stop along the way in Australia and also look at some of the threats that our shorebirds are facing while they're here during the Australian summer. Don't forget to head to our website where you can check out where the shorebirds are on our interactive map. Find out where local events are happening in your area and download the BirdLife Australia Shorebird ID app. See you next time.